Hey guys, what is up? A Ray Mage here, doing another World of Tanks 360 beta review. Today we're going to be doing the M26 Pershing. Now this is a surprisingly very good tank. It has some great versatility, which is common amongst American mediums, and it has a... It's really an introduction to the playstyle you'll have to learn to use when you go on to the M46 patent and the M48A1 uh, patent. Very good tanks, and the Pershing is really that first step into that lineup. Uh, as some of you, if any of you guys read up on history a little bit, you will know the M46 is really just an improved uh, M26 Pershing. So you're not getting a gigantic difference, but the play style is very similar. So let's go ahead and jump right on into the packages and talk about what you get here in the stock form. I, you know, I whined and complained about the stock grind on German mediums, and I did not know how well I had it until I got to the Pershing. Now, bear in mind, I'm used to the play style of dealing damage constantly. That's really all you focus on as a German medium. With American mediums, it's much more different. So here we are, 560 horsepower engine, 76 millimeter M1A1 gun, 128 millimeters of penetration, and 115 damage. This gun really limits the tank stock. It is painful. It makes it unnecessary. Really, a really painful stock run. It's really unnecessary, in my opinion. Um, and then, of course, there's your tracks. Uh, 36 traverse speed, and there, of course, is your uh, turret. 390 uh, uh, meters of view range, and it looks like 36. I'm a long ways from my TV, so cut me some slack if I do read those numbers wrong. Um, very painful stock grind. Now, once you get to the second package, you do end up with a more improved option, at least. Get a 704 horsepower engine. You move up to the M1A2 76mm gun. You don't gain anything in terms of damage. I believe the penetration is actually the same. Uh, accuracy is a little bit better, but the rate of fire is much more higher. So, you know, it, it's an okay flanking tank at this point. And, of course, you get a new set of tracks. 38 Traverse, much more better, much more nimbler uh, tank at this point. Better at passive scouting. You pretty much want to stick to that role. Now here, this is where the tank wakes up. This is where the Pershing stands on its own. It can not only be a good flanking tank, it can be an okay sniper. It can be an effective tank to lead an assault at this point. It's not perfect, and it's a far better tank. But it's not completely badass. At this point, you upgrade to the uh, new turret, which will give you... Let me pull up the stats, please. Uh, you get a, uh, you stick with the 704 horsepower engine, same tracks. But you move on up to the 90mm M3 gun, 160 millimeters of penetration, 240 damage. Huge, huge difference in terms of penetration and in terms of uh, accuracy and penetration much better gun overall and of course you move on up to a new turret 400 uh, meters of, of view and 38 uh, traverse speed I believe that's actually about the same but the view range is a little bit higher this tank can stand on its own at this point but this this is the big boy this is where you want to be this is the option you want now the, obviously what you gain is really the gun the gun this gun is what sets it apart this is what makes the Pershing uh, a competitive tank against the Panther too. Same engine, same tracks, uh, I believe same turret, yep, same turret, but you get the 90mm T15 E2 M2 gun, 180mm of penetration, the damage is about the same, I believe the accuracy is a little bit higher, you can actually be more precise with this gun than the regular 90mm M3. This is where this tank can stand on its own. Now I'm going to switch to some gameplay guys, and you will be able to see this tank for what it is, see how good it is. Um, I was in a, it was a tier 9, 8 game, there were a few tier 7s there, but this was a good game, and it shows off a little bit of what this tank can do, and it's versatility. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to that, be patient. Alrighty guys, here we go with some uh, standard battle on cliffs. Uh, going in right into the, the gameplay here, uh, this was a 5 kill gameplay, and this was a match where I believe it was... I think it was dominated by tier 9s and 8s. There was a few tier 7s sprinkled in there. Here you are, two E75s, a T95. Otherwise, Tiger 2, Persian, T28, GW Panthers. You know, it's a little bit of everything. And I think I even seen a Tiger 1 in there. But this was decent, respectable matchmaking. But I show here 
in this gameplay that you are not completely helpless. I know there's a lot of guys that will, they're in their tier A and they'll end up in these, you know, matches where they gotta play against other tier 9. Sometimes they're in very tier 9 heavy matches. And I can kinda understand, you know, it ain't fun. And these T, and the, and these T29s, one of these T29s, you know, was a good champ. He was a good sport about it. I think this is him right here in front of me. He had a mic, I know that. But, you know, he pushed up and helped me out when I needed it. He knew I couldn't exactly hold this fight against the E75, and he helped me out late in the match. Helped me out big time. But, too many times I see guys that, you know, they're in there, and they're Tier 8, and they'll end up in Tier 9 match. Sometimes, unfortunately, get into a Tier, tier 10 match. And the only thing, you know, you, you just feel like you can't do anything... But guys, you have to remember, you know, at that point, you are mostly a support tank. You're there to help your big guys out. You're there to help out your your top tier dogs in the fight. And, you know, you're not going to be the, you know, the bruiser you thought you were because you're not the top dog. You're just going to have to deal with that. Now, this is where you do what you do with the person. You kind of stick out a little bit, get a spot or two. And here I get about three detections, I believe. And this was a this was a good match for me. Now I tried to get a little smart here. I tried to get a little cheeky, and I tried to shoot this E75 again. Now I did hit him for about 200 plus damage, and that's good. Yeah, that's all I want. Just a little damage. Poke my head out a little bit. Get some spots. Let my teammates know. Hey, you know, there's some of these guys going around the lighthouse. And that's what you can do with the Pershing. You just stick out your nose a little bit out there, and you're just looking for more spots. I whack this Pershing. Now I do go back and forth. I'm just trying to throw his aim off. Not too sure. How how far upgraded he is. I, him and I do butt heads again later in this match. But, you know, I'm basically just trying to probe around, give my teammates a chance, letting them know, hey, this is where everything's going on. Now, it looks like from where the, how this match transpired and how the match unfolded, it looks like all the action was in Death Valley. But there was enough action uh, here up on uh, Lighthouse and around the bend going around Lighthouse. So, this was a fairly spread out match. It wasn't too crazy. It wasn't too wide open. You know, it was fairly even. Now, you've seen, once that E75 gave me his front, I couldn't do anything. Here, I think I tried to hit him again. I think I was going for a turret ring shot. Didn't do anything. I probably would have been better off going high explosive and whacking him. Now, this T29, I think he is stock. He's using that 76 millimeter gun. I'm not exactly afraid of a T-29, but I'm worried about that Pershing, because I know he's got enough gun to hurt me. Chances are, if he has a 90 on it. But, here you go, T-29 bounces, because he's got that 76. I think he must he just got a new tank and thought he could throw his weight around, but I make him pay for it. And see, this is where a Pershing is dangerous. This is where any medium tank is dangerous, when you have somebody's flank. Now, I hold position. I don't freak out when this Pershing pushes me. And it looks like he has the final gun like me. He's in a final form. At this point, he's, cha he's shaking his turret. I don't know if it's because he made a mistake and he's a little agitated, or he's trying to tell me something. I don't know, but I make him pay. Now, you'll notice here on the mini-map, I'm seeing the he two heavies. I see that T29, and now I'm seeing what I think is the E75 push across. And by this point, after I kill the Pershing, I'm panicking. I'm in panic mode. I'm scared to death. Fortunately, though, once I turned my sights on that E75, I realized he wasn't paying any attention. So whatever's on the far end, maybe it's my uh, the other E75 that was backing me up earlier. But... Fortunately, he's causing enough trouble over there. Whoever it is, I think it's the E-75 causing enough trouble over there that the enemy E-75 is not paying me any attention. And I wear this dude out, I know, for over a thousand damage. This enemy E-75, he's not paying any attention. I can't even believe he's giving me his back and side so much. And I put, you know, multiple shots in him, as you can see. I think I tried to hit him here on the side of the turret. Bounce, unfortunately, to my chagrin. And he's a fully upgraded E75 from the looks, and now he's looking at me. And by this point, I'm saying, where is my team? T29 pulls up. He's got my back. That's good. At least I know he's probably got a 105. He's probably got a slightly better gun than me. I try to hit this uh, E75 into his hatch. I don't think I do any damage. I may have even missed or bounced. But he pushes up. He does get a shot into me. Makes me pay. <laughs> from my pesky ways here. Unfortunately, my teammates push up. T-29's holding the line. He's trying to do what he can. He knows I can only do so much. And, you know, look at, looky looky. T-29 did his job. Messed this E-75 up. That was good work on his part. Uh, so, you know, shout out to that guy. Now, at this point, 
I am going to try and just expose the enemy tanks. I did my part. I held my line, held my part of the battlefield, and I did what was necessary. You know, I, I did, provided a, you know, a good distraction for that enemy Pershing. And of course, that E-75, the enemy E-75, was so damn distracted, and he ignored me completely, unbelievably. And he wanted to focus on our E-75 that I was able to just wear him out. So I mean, that's the thing. You either have to provide yourself as a distraction to help your big guys out, or you can be that pesky thorn in the side to the enemy big guys and just hit them in the side, hit them in the rear. Now, I know that's easier said than done, but you can do more in this tank. And see here, I'm going up to the edge. I'm not going up to that base. I'm not dumb enough to. But I'm sticking my nose out just enough where I can get spots. And here I'm going to get a spot. I believe it's on a Churchill 7 is who I spot up here. But at this point, I'm already hunting. I'm looking for artillery. I'm helping my team out. Get a nice spot on this Churchill 7. Wear him out. And I find I do get the kill on him. I think he gets one or two shots in on me. Get some help and assist there from my teammate. And like I said, at this point, I'm thinking my next move is i got to go down this hill somehow. And, oh, wait, there's two more heavies. So, you know, what I'm... Oh, I'm sorry, there's one other heavy down there. And at this point, I'm thinking, all right... I gotta think of a way to get down this hill and provide help for my team. Now, the heavy is dead, so it's a non-issue at this point. Now, I am worried about this Team 95. I do try to get a nice shot on the side, but the gun just isn't enough for the job. I can't pen them completely. I know if I had that 105 on the Patton, the M46 Patton, I probably would have penned them. But, you know, I say, you know what, YOLO it, going down this hill. And, you know, I know my teammates are causing enough of a problem that he is focused on them. At this point, I see the attacking symbol. Chances are this guy has been tracked. Fortunately, he is. I get a nice back shot, and I get my third kill of the game. So, you know, I'm looking, I'm weighing my options, and I know there's already, and I don't want to be stupid, and I got great view range. You know, I can spot these guys before they spot me. And, you know, I do pick off two more kills, and I end up with a five-kill game. But this was fun. In the M26 Pershing, versatile tank, great tank. Recommended um, packages to use on this tank. Um, definitely would use the coated optics. Definitely would use the medium caliber gun rammer. Third option is up to you. I use the advanced gun lane drive just so I could have quicker aim times. But, you know, some of you guys might feel it's necessary to run the camo on this thing. It's up to you. Very good versatile tank. I will add, you are not quite as good of a passive scout as the T-20. You don't have the camouflage value that the T-20 has because it's a smaller profile tank. This is a bigger tank, but that's why I'm telling you, you know, you kind of poke your nose out, get a spot or two, you know, hit them a few times and back out of the fight. And remember, this tank is more versatile than the E-50s or the Panther 2s. The, the roles in the game will change constantly, and you have to be ready to run around, flank, spot, and snipe. you got to do a little bit of everything. All right, guys, this gameplay is coming to an end. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.